Welcome everyone for uh, the second day of DevConf Czech 2022. And it's my pleasure to announce the first meetup in this uh, session room. It will be multi-tenant programmable data planes by Radostiv Stojanov. First, I would like to share a couple of information about uh, the speaker today. So Radostin is a software engineer at Red Hat working on container migration and a PhD student at the University of Oxford exploring virtualization in programmable data planes and accelerating applications within network computing. Um, with that, I can just navigate the audience. If you have any question, uh, please utilize the Q&A tab. And uh, I hand it over to you, Radostin. Thank you. Thank you for the Thank introduction. Um, so today we'll be talking about our work on multi-tenant programmable data planes. And the talk itself is outlined as follows. First, I will start with brief introduction in uh, to different types of data planes and the level of, pro of programmability they offer. Then I will describe how the P4 programming language can be used to write software for programmable data planes. Next, I'm going to explore the concept of virtualization in programmable data planes, and I'm going to introduce MTPSA, a multi-tenant programmable switch architecture. And at the end, I have prepared a live demo of the MTPSA prototype. So what is a data plane? The term software defined networking or SDN is commonly used to describe an architecture which is um, in which the control plane and the data plane are separate. The control plane is usually centralized and it is used to configure a distributed set of data planes. Programmability between the control plane and, and the data plane is achieved with the standard API known as OpenFlow. OpenFlow enables network operators to write applications that run on the centralized controller and interact with devices through, throughout the network. OpenFlow enables the functionality of high-performance devices to be easily modifiable. However, in this model, the data plane is relatively fixed. In particular, this means that um, supported network protocols are defined by the OpenFlow specification. And as a result, um, the demand for innovation requires continuously expanding the OpenFlow specification. And clearly, this, this approach doesn't respond well to innovation. The network community has therefore focused on extending the programmability of data planes to address this problem. So re recent innovations have enabled um, programmable high-speed packet processing both in hardware and software. However, programming different types of data planes often requires different set of tools and programming languages. For example, FPGA-based packet processors usually are usually programmed with hardware descriptive languages such as Verilog or VHDL. SmartNICs and Switch ASICs usually have vendor-specific software development kits and solutions for high-speed packet processing with software, for example, in the kernel with BPF or in user space with frameworks such as DPTK require specialized knowledge and again encounter the problem of portability. So, in the last 10 years has been developed a common abstraction model for packet processing that is based on the match action paradigm, match on a set of headers and perform action that would process the packet. In this model, we use an architecture and programming language that are specific to the domain of networking. In this diagram uh, is illustrated a simple pipeline of protocol independent switch architecture or PISA. In PISA, we have a programmable parser that extracts a specified set of packet headers. Once the packet headers have been extracted, each stage in the pipeline can match on different headers at the same time. And once it's, uh, it's matched upon them, it can perform a specified action. With this abstraction model, the network data plane doesn't know what the protocol is, and the programmer declares what packet headers are recognized, how they're going to be processed, and how they're going to be assembled back into the output packet. So for this abstraction model, um, we use a domain-specific programming language called P4. P4 is an acronym and stands for Programming Protocol Independent Packet Processors. And to declare packet headers, we, P4 provides a construct called header. Um, this is similar to the C structure. And 
it specifies a set of headers um, that can be used by a programmable parser. A, a parser is a finite state machine that consists of a set of states and transitions. The initial state is called start and the final state is either accept or reject. And in addition to extracting packet headers, the parser can also um, set metadata associated with the packet. The extracted packet headers and the specified metadata can be used by match action tables. Each table specifies keys and set of actions as well as other parameters such as size and default action. Actions can add, modify or remove packet headers or um, the metadata associated with the packet. And the dparser um, is used to set packet headers um, to set the packet headers that are used to assemble the, the packet at the end. And the dparser also specifies the order of the packet headers as well. So a P4 program consists of these basic building blocks and they, they allow to define a high level, um, a high, in, in high level language, the packet processing logic of, of a program. So, um, with this level of flexibility, developers can offload different applications that traditionally run on CPUs to high performance network devices. Some applications um, that have been developed by the network community um, are, for example, inbound network telemetry that is used to collect state information and measurements directly in the data plane at each hop, providing better visibility in the network, or load balancing that allows to replace hundreds of software load balancers with a single programmable switch or machine learning applications or consensus protocols and many others. So can we, is it possible to run multiple people programs on a single switch at the same time? How can we support multi-tenancy in the data plane? Data center networks are often shared by many users or organizations with different requirements and we need to provide security isolation to make sure that one P4 program cannot access the data used by another performance isolation to, to make sure that the performance of one of one P4 program does not affect the performance of other programs on the data plane and resource isolation to ensure that the match action tables, the stateful registers, counters and other resources are dedicated to a specific P4 program and runtime reconfigurability so that we can load uh, each P4 program separately in the, in the pipeline. So we can use to solve this problem, we can use virtualization in programmable data planes. And there have been several uh, approaches for this proposed in the literature. The first one is compiler-based virtualization. In this approach, um, we take multiple P4 programs and basically merge them together into a single program that is then loaded on the data plane. This approach is simple and works for use cases such as A-B testing. However, it doesn't provide sufficient isolation between programs and the ability to reconfigure a single program in the, in the data plane at runtime is also um, challenging. Another approach is to use a generic P4 program that can be configured at runtime to emulate different applications. Um, using constructs like recirculation and resubmission, it, it can process the same packet multiple times and perform all the specified actions. However, this approach um, has significant overhead in terms of latency and resources uh, utilization. Um, it does enable runtime reconfigurability, but it, it's not ideal. And the, the third approach is to uh, design an architecture that um, natively supports multi-tenancy. In particular, we can provide all requirements for multi-tenancy using separate parallel pipelines for each user program. So we can run multiple P4 programs on a single data plane with virtualization. How can we design a multi-tenant programmable switch? As a starting point, we can use a P4 architecture called PSA, Portable Switch Architecture. PSA defines two pipelines, ingress and egress, um, and it can be supported on different hardware and software targets. In theory, this means that you can write a P4 program and then compile 
um, the P4 program for PSA and compile this pro program to a specific target. To support multi-tenancy, we want to be able to compile and load each user program as a separate module. Each user should be able to run in a separate context and the packet should be associated with P4 pro each packet should be associated with a specific user program. And to achieve this, and to achieve this, we should be able to process the packets before and after user programs. So let's send PSA uh, with support for multi-tenancy. MTPSA consists of a super user pipeline that can process packets before and after user programs. The super user pipeline is responsible for associating incoming packets with user programs and applying a set of permissions for each user. The user pipelines are implemented in parallel to one another, and each user has a set, each user program runs in a separate context, and the user program can be loaded at runtime. So the super user ingress pipeline um, can apply packet encapsulation, quality of service, congestion control, or similar operations. This allows, for example, to append additional information about the user, like the user ID in the VXLAN header, for example. The super user ingress pipeline can then extract any headers before passing the packet to the user pipeline or append any additional information or even drop the packet after the user pipeline. MQPSA also has um, user permissions. Um, user permissions are um, part of the in intrinsic or standard metadata that allows to um, limit the capabilities available to user programs. Um, for example, in this case, we have, um, in this example, we just disabled the counter extern for a specific user. So for this demo, I have two user programs. Um, so the first program is a load balancer and the second program is a calculator. Um, the setup itself is created with uh, Mininet and it has four nodes and a single switch. The first uh, host one, two and three are connected to the load balancer and host four is connected to the calculator. For the second demo, I have um, four user programs and the, the setup is the same, four nodes and um, each node is connected to a single switch. Oh, we have a single switch and user one and three in addition, in addition to level three forwarding uh, also use a counter extern. So, just so this is the first demo. When we run make, we compile uh, each user, uh, each P4 program. We have a main P4 program, which uh, represents the super user pipeline and two um, user programs. The first one implementing the calculator and the second one um, implementing the load balancer. So, So on host three, I will start the receiver script and host two as well. So this script will basically listen on uh, ETH zero. Then on host one, I will send the packet to this IP address with hello message. The packet is first received on host two or three. This is the load answer itself. And this is host four. Host four is connected to a calculator. And I'm going to use calculator script that would send a packet with uh, this equation. And then um, the switch itself would perform the um, arithmetic operation and return the response, uh, return the packet as a response. Um, but the second demo. Um, we have four user programs. Um, 
Each user program implements level three forwarding, but the first and the third program also have a counter that um, basically keeps information about the packets that have been processed. And now I'm going to start um, a CFI that would connect to the switch. Set the switch context to user one. Um, this is the um, use the pipeline of the first user. And then I'm going to hit the counter here. And we can see that uh, there have been several packets being processed. Now if I switch to user three, and if I try to read the counter here, the counter is disabled. This is because um, we have this line here, which sets the permissions that disable the counter extern for user three. So if we comment out this line, then run the switch again and connect to user one. Read the counter again, it works. And then if we switch to user three, bring the counter here, we can see that it works again. So um, in summary, uh, MQPSA allows user programs to be, uh, multiple people programs to be loaded as separate modules. Uh, each user program runs in a separate context. Um, it has separate set of uh, match action tables and uh, in um, resources such as stateful registers. Each package is associated with user program in the pipeline and the packet processing before and after user programs is um, done with super user pipeline. Thank you very much for listening. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Radostin. Um, yeah, there is in fact uh, one question. Uh, you mentioned smart uh, NICs to use before. Does, does it work uh, on any smart NIC? Not sure at what point an NIC uh, becomes a smart NIC. Um, so this is actually something I'm, we are currently exploring. Um, um, well, in, in particular, we are looking at uh, Bluefield SmartNix, um, but um, of course you can you can use others as well. So um, I don't think there are SmartNix currently in existence that you can just buy and it would allow you to load different uh, P4 programs. It's it's just because they're uh, AC based. But if you use FPGAs, with FPGA is quite easy. We we have a prototype. Uh, of MQPSA for the native PJ assume platform. Um, does this answer the question? Hopefully, I don't see the reaction in the chat yet. Yeah, it works for at the end. All right, uh, does anybody else have a question? There is a huge thank you from uh, Magnus. All right. Um, if there are no additional questions. Oh, there is one more question. Hold on. Uh, but maybe we will um, wait for a little while till it's uh, typed. Uh, or if you actually want to ask the question live, uh, we still have a couple of minutes. You can click the uh, share audio and video and I can pull you in. The next question would be, what is the difference between uh, EBPF uh, and DPDK uh, as backend? Oh, um, so um, in terms of P4, um, the compiler itself is um, is implemented with frontend and backend. So each, uh, the frontend itself is used to parse the P4 language, the P4 program and then it generates intermediate representation. This intermediate representation is then used by different backends in the compiler to 
create uh, a program. So basically, the way you can run P4 program with GPTK or eBPF is basically just transpiling P4 into eBPF program or GPTK. And so in terms of target, um, well, GPTK runs in user space and eBPF, uh, for example, with XDP is running in the kernel. So um, there are a lot of differences, but um, yeah, I think this is kind of like out of the scope. Thank you, Radosti. Thank you. Okay, uh, I don't see any other question, um, but it doesn't mean no, no other will actually uh, be added. Let's give it like one more or two seconds. All right, so I would like to uh, thank you for the audience and for us for the lovely presentation. And uh, if you would like to interact with us in, even after this talk, um, I recommend joining the work adventure hallway track. Uh, I just pasted the link there uh, in a chat. It's um, the moment you bump into the avatar of Radostin, it opens a live uh, online communication. You know, to, like a, I think it's a Jitsi video. So I uh, invite you there. Thank you all.